Hospital in Northampton, Massachusetts, to that of an industrial arts teacher in Maryland and a drafting instructor at Milford High School. Roger is a member of the Manchester Toastmasters Club, where he holds the rank of Distinguished Toastmaster. He is also past president of the Poetry Society of New Hampshire. Roger is past commandant and active member of the Granite State Detachment Number 542 of the Marine Corps League. It is now an honor and a pleasure to introduce my friend, Roger Davies. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Oh, come on, you can do better than that. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. All right. I'm here to talk about veterans. And I'm going to talk to you about veterans because this is the way they were in my family. As a kid, I used to live across from a cemetery in Florence, Massachusetts, and we had a Memorial Day, and every Memorial Day, there was a car there with the veterans from the Civil War from the Veterans Hospital. And sitting in that car was a Mr. Clark, who I had later as a patient when I was working at the Vets Hospital after World War II. And Mr. Clark had been a 10-year-old drummer boy from a regiment in Maine. Who, and the drummer boys used to walk out in front of the regiment and lead them into battle. Bob Clark has a special place in my heart as a veteran. My family had all veterans. My sister Ruth was an army nurse. She went in on the invasion of North Africa, in the invasion of Sicily, in the invasion of Italy, in the invasion of France, in the invasion of Germany, four years as a frontline anesthesiologist. My brother Kenneth was a merchant marine captain. He sailed the seven seas. He was torpedoed once, strafed four times, and made many runs to Murmansk in Russia. And the waters going to Murmansk were nothing but ice and slush. All hardship tours. My brother Harold was a Boy Scout. At age 13, he could build his own little crystal radio sets. Now, what's that got to do with being a veteran? Listen to how that spilled out. Harold joined the Army during the Depression in 1937 so he could bring some money into the house. And while he was in, in the Army, they asked, does anybody here know anything about radio? And Harold said, well, I can, breathe, I can build crystal sets, I can read Morse code. And they whistled him right off to Fort Knox, Kentucky, and he became a communications officer. Not just a communications officer, he became the communications officer for the commander of the Hell on Wheels Division, General George S. Randall. So his service life meant a lot to him. Out of that, it was uh, one day, 50th anniversary of D-Day, I received a telephone call from Harold and he said, Roger, I'm losing my mind. You see, what they had done, at, the people in charge of uh, public relations had films of D-Day and they were playing it on television. And those, those sites, Harold was reliving it all. He, was, he said, Roger, I'm going crazy. I need help. What do I do? I said, well, you, you have to go up to the VA hospital, and you have to tell them what your problem is and see a psychiatrist to get straightened out, Harold. And he said, I can't do that. My family will think I'm crazy. And I said, you have to do that to prove to your family that you're not crazy. So there's all kinds of, of effects that veterans have within their hearts related to the duties that they perform as veterans for you so that we can have a country called the United States of America. It's a beautiful tribute to honor veterans and we thank you very much for that. As for my service, I went in just at the end of the war as a, as a little kid, 17 years old, and uh, 
I thought it was quite an accomplishment because I put on 44 pounds in three months of boot camp. I went from a, I went up to 188 pounds, and my father came to pick me up my boot van at the Springfield train station. He walked by me four times. I finally had to step up and say, "Dad, me." So we get under, we undergo all sorts of changes when we enter the service, and some of them are pleasant and some of them are most unpleasant. So please be considerate of veterans. You don't know what they harbor in their souls. Uh, we, we are a great crew. We have served you well, and we are very proud of all of you. And with that, I conclude. Thank you very much. We have a little something for Roger. I know you can't see it out there, but I kind of call it the before and after. It's a picture of Roger in 1946, right? When he went into the Marine Corps. And a picture of Roger a few weeks ago. So we thank you, Roger. I'd like to introduce another friend of mine. This man has worked very hard the, uh, the past uh, 48 hours. He was very much involved with the visit of uh, Vice President Biden into the city. Uh, he's taking pain pills because he's been on his feet for so long. This is, a, a past com as I mentioned before, a past commander of Sweeney Post. Again, my friend, Bill Whitmore. Thank you, Jane. Now, representing the Manchester Veterans Council, uh, the Manchester Veterans Council is proud to announce that this year's recipient of the Manchester Council's Tony Caram Award is Joe Byron, founder of Honor Flight New England. <laughs> Honor Flight is an independent, nonprofit organization created solely to honor America's veterans for all their sacrifices. Since its inception in 2009, Honor Flight of New England has transported hundreds of World War II veterans to Washington, D.C. for a full day, free of charge, to visit their memorials. Veterans Honor Flights are paid for entirely through private donations. Joe is a Vietnam-era veteran and a retired law enforcement officer. And prior to his retirement, he spent four years investigating crimes against senior citizens. He then worked as an investigator for the New Hampshire Attorney General's Office where he continued investigating crimes against the most vulnerable population. And since 2009, Honor Flight of New England has completed 19 flights and transported 551 World War II veterans. It is my pleasure and honor to present the Tony Caram Award to a true hero, Joe Byron. today and uh, to see Mr. Davies. Mr. Davies took one of our, our most recent trips and he just said to me, I can't thank you enough. And I, I want to say a little bit about Tony Caron. When we started this, Tony was on our first flight and we had 13 veterans on our first flight and we really, really had no clue what it would turn out to be. And we used to rent our wheelchairs in Washington so our veterans would be able to sit early in the, in the morning and during the long day. And one day we got down there and our wheelchairs weren't there. And when we got back, we were wondering what we would, were gonna be able to do to get wheelchairs that we could take with us so our most senior veterans could have a comfortable day. So what we did is we called Tony and Irene Carroll and said, hey, we're in kind of a bind. We're wondering if you can help us out. And they said, we sure can. And within a matter of days, we had 20 wheelchairs that we take with us that have been with us for at least the last 15 flights so while World War II veterans could be comfortable. 
So we will be forever grateful for the, their generosity to us. There's no doubt he's looking down on us today. And Tony, thank you, you're our hero. Our World War II veterans are our heroes, and all of you veterans out there are our heroes. Thank you so much for having me here today. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. Uh, by the way, standing right over there is Irene Cara. Irene? And we miss Tony. That beautiful monument over there to the World War II veterans, uh, Tony played a big, big part in uh, that becoming a reality. And speaking of that, I, I, I intentionally overlooked a very close friend of mine in the introductions. I really can't think of anybody in Manchester who has done more for veterans, at least from, from what I've seen, than Alderman of Ours, Mike Lopez. And then we have our sign person, Leo Cody, who uh, knows where every sign from every politician is throughout the city, right? Uh, at this point, I'd like to have uh, Mayor Gatzis and uh, Alderman Lopez present the wreath over in front of the uh, World War II Memorial. Thank you.